Hello, dear students. This is your professor, Lazaro Pino, and today we are going to study simple sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. What is a simple sentence? Well, it's that one that contains a subject and a verb. But sometimes they can contain also an object and modifiers. In the first sentence she wrote, you can find the subject in yellow and the verb in green. But in the, in the second one, beside the subject and the verb, we can find also a direct object. Her literature review is the object of this sentence. In the third and fourth one, beside the subject, the verb, and the, and the object of a sentence, we can find also what we call prepositional phrases. Prepositional phrases are made of a preposition and a, a noun or a pronoun. And they can make the, the work of an adjective or a, an adverb. But remember, a simple sentence makes sense by itself. The word order in a simple sentence is the following one. We begin by the subject, then the verb, then the direct or indirect object. We can change this position. And uh, after that, you have the place and at the end, the time. This is the word order. But if you want to make more emphasis in the time, for example, you can begin by the expression of time. If you follow the word order, your sentences will be a correct, grammatically correct. What is a complex sentence? Well, a complex sentence contains at least one independent clause and at least one dependent clause. Dependent clauses can refer to the subject. For example, if you use who or which, or also the, the sequence of time, if you use things, or while, or a casual element if you use because if of the independent clause. If the sentence begins with a dependent clause, note the comma after this clause. If on the other hand, the sentence we begin with an independent clause, there is not a a comma separating the two clauses. Let's begin. Although she completed her literature review, well, this sentence in blue is in this case a dependent clause. That's why you follow by a comma in pink. And then you have in the yellow is uh, and bold a sentence that is the independent one. Because this sentence in yellow makes sense by itself. She is still needed to work on her methods section. If you say that, you know or you have complete sense in what you're saying. But if you say, although she completed her literature review, you say, what? It, that sentence makes, doesn't make sense by itself. So that's why we call this 
dependent sentence and uh, is subordinated to a de an independent one. In the second one, you also find the dependent sentence at the beginning. Look, they begin always by a conjunction. Because he organized his sources by them, comma, it was easier for his readers to follow. You can say also, it was easier for his readers to follow because he organized his sources by them. If you change the order of the sentence, then you don't need a comma. Like in the last sentence, they studied the APA rules for many hours. This is an independent sentence, and you don't need a comma to separate this a main sentence uh, from the dependent one. That is, as they were so interesting. Well, what is a compound complex sentence? Sentences types can also be combined. A compound complex sentence contains at least two independent clauses and at least one dependent clause. For example, she completed her literature review, but she still needs to work on her method section. These two sentences are independent because they make sense by uh, themselves. And they are joined by a conjunction. But look at this. After that, you have a, an, an, a, a dependent sentence. Even though she finished her methods course last semester, this sentence doesn't make sense by itself. So this is dependent. And these three sentences together make what we call compound complex sentence. You can stop the video at any time and make the analysis of the following sentences. In every case, you will find two independent sentences joined by a conjunction and, and, and a dependent one that is in blue always. Well, I, in this section of the class, I will stop into remembering different parts of a sentence. The noun, the noun is something like a person, an animal, a place, a, a thing, and sometimes, a concept. Nouns are typically used as subjects, objects, objects of prepositions, and modifiers of other nouns. For example, Maggie wrote the dissertation. Maggie is a noun, it's a person, and dissertation is a direct object. The author presented the results in chapter four. Chapter four is an object of a preposition. Look, uh, this is a prepositional phrase that begins with in. That is a preposition. His research findings can contribute to social change. In this case, research is a modifier of finding.
the verb. This expresses that the person, animal, place, in, or concept does. In English, verbs follow the noun. For example, it takes. Takes is a verb. And it's, and it's following it that is the subject. She has studied. Studied is the verb and is following the subject, she. Writing a dissertation is the object, is the subject, sorry, and is followed by the uh, verb to be. The verb to be is also sometimes referred to as a, co a copula or linking verb. It links the subject, in this case, writing a dissertation, to the complement or the predicate of a sentence. In this case, her. The adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. For example, the diligent student. Diligent is, a, is an adjective and is modifying a student that is a noun. Here you can see it can be difficult. Difficult in this case is placed after the verb to be. And describe what is like to balance time. For example, we have a, a that in English. The adjectives are always uh, in, in singular. They have no plural. You can say a different idea or you can say some different ideas. No matter that ideas is in singular or plural. The adjective different that is modifying idea or ideas remains the same. It's incorrect to put the adjective in plural. The adverb give more information about the verb and about how the action was done. Adverbs tells how, where, when, why, etc., depending on the context. The, ad, the adverb can come before or after the verb, or at the beginning or end of the sentence. Here you can see different examples how the adverb can go at the end, or can go in between, or can go at the beginning. You have three examples here. A pronoun, well, it is in place of the noun. For example, a Smith 2014 interview, the applicants as they arrive, they is um, modifying or is taking the place of applicants. He was interested in ideas that were never previous, previously recorded, not those that have already been published. He, that, and those are pronouns. The determiner. This word makes the reference of the noun more specific. Example, he's. Her, my, their, the, a, and these, these. As you can see, they can be possessive, adjective, um, or can be um, a, um, an article, the, that is the, the uh, is the, is an article or a, and then there are in other undetermined 
articles or could be um, um, adjective that shows you which one you are pointing. For example, these, that, these, those. A preposition, a preposition comes before a noun or a noun phrase. For example, I choose the, to interview teachers in the district closest to me. The recorder was placed next to, this is a preposition, the interviewee. I stopped the recording in the middle of, in the middle of is a, a preposition. And as, as I told you before, they go before the noun. Conjunction is a word that joins. In this case, two clauses, but they can also join two nouns to a, a diff, two, diff, uh, two uh, words of the same type. For example, you can join two adjectives, ugly and interesting, two adjectives. Or you can join two nouns, Mary and Jean. Or you can join, as you can see here, two sentences. Two clauses. Auxiliary verbs. Well, they are helping verbs and they are used to build up complete verbs. We have primary auxiliary verbs like the verb be, have, and to. Or we have auxiliary, modal auxiliary verbs like can, could, may, might, must, shall, shall, should, will, would. Or we have modal, semi-modal auxiliary verbs like be going to, ought to, have to, had better, used to, or be able to. Here we have some examples. Have investigated here in, in blue is a present perfect tense. And here you can see that have is a primary auxiliary verb to make the, pres the present perfect tense. Also you have here in yellow, the modal auxiliary verbs like could, may. And here you have the semi-auxiliary verbs that are used to express, for example, future, are going to, or are about to. These are always followed by a simple form of the verb. Look, are going to, and then you have the simple verb are about to, and you have here a simple verb. Well, that's all. I hope you, that you have an idea about simple, complex, and uh, compound sentences.